Welcome back to another Peck and Nash video. I'm Chef Chuck and this is Dave G. How are you doing everybody? Today we are making a Basque cheesecake. Mmm. No crust. No crust. No lines, no bags. No crust. No crust. Nice caramelized exterior. Soft and creamy inside. Yeah. <laughs> On top of that we're going to make a ginger rhubarb compote. Very nice. A little acidity, a little cinnamon, a little vanilla in that. Two to one sugar ratio. It's going to be fantastic. Sounds great. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's get ready. <sighs> the ingredients needed in this recipe are a pound of cream cheese, four whole eggs, a cup of cream, a tablespoon of flour, and just scant three quarter cups of sugar. Aside from measuring out our ingredients, we gotta prepare the pan, right? So here I have an eight inch by three inch ring mold, as you can see, a very flat sheet pan, um, and a piece of parchment, twice the size of the sheet pan, folded evenly in half, right? So I'm gonna put, find the halfway mark here, right? What I'm doing is cutting a paper disc on the bottom that's a, about an inch uh, larger on, than the pan. So 10 inches in diameter, right? Yes, chef. Sounds great. Just like that. Then we're going to cut two strips to go around the exterior or along the walls. So just roll your pan just like that, just to make sure you get a straight line. You'll understand that in a minute. So I'm going to cut along this outside but you'll understand why you want it 10 inches the uh round in diameter okay in just a minute and then take that and just fold it along that line making sure you get a straight edge then we're going to cut two strips along that line If I had more counter space, I would have just used a knife. But you know what? It's done and we're good. Damn. That's why I never played basketball. <laughs> I'm going to spread a little cold butter on the inside of the pan. Just so it helps the uh, paper stay in place. I'm going to butter the paper also. Just the bottom, right? Extra insurance. Cake doesn't stick. Now, you're going to press that in all the way along the edges. All right. Make sure it's nice and flat. You're going to have creases, so just fold those, you know. So they uh, create a flat surface, right? Now we're going to take our strips and we're going to put those on the, bottom, on the sides, right? You want to make sure that the strip down at the corner where the bottom and the sides meet um, is nice and flat, right? Or nice, even all the way around. If you get a few wrinkles around the edge, it's not a huge deal. And continue putting that on. Voila. Turn your oven on 400. So when the cake's mixed, we just get to put it right into the oven and the sooner we get to enjoy it. <sighs> Make sure no cats or small children in your oven. That would be a very unfortunate situation. Let's mix. Let's mix. Dr. Mixcraft! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got our cream cheese. Hello, good afternoon. And sugar. We're going to paddle this till it smooths out a little bit. We're not necessarily whipping air into it. We just want to cream it a bit, right? All right. I'm 
by putting the granulated sugar with the cream cheese, the granules of sugar help the creaming process by breaking down the uh, lumps. Right, right. <laughs> Scrape the bowl down. Scrape it, scrape it, baby. Add your flour. Mix it a little bit. Now we're going to gradually add our eggs. Add one egg at a time, let it mix in. Maybe you can do it faster. Scrape your bowl down again. We don't want any residual whatnots or, you know, clumps of unmixed cheese in it, right? Right. Exactly, yes, chef. Okay, chef. Ah. Let's add another egg. Just scrape the bowl down just to make sure you have no other lumps. Move stuff around, just the extra insurance. I think it looks good. Now we're gonna add our cream. Ooh, ah. Yummy goodness out of the pan. Now we're going to put it in the oven. It's going to take about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to cook this cake. So I'm starting with 45 minutes. All right. All right, well now it's time to play that game. What's in season? Oh, Farmageddon! <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the middle of April. That's right. Okay, so my first guess, strawberries. No. Almost. Almost? Yeah. Uh, watermelon? No. Uh, um, oranges? Yes. Oranges are in season? Like the tail end of the season, right? Oh. Because it's usually a winter. Citruses are like a winter fruit. But it's not like right in the middle of the season. No. So what about blueberries? Blueberries? Uh, a couple months. couple months. Yeah. Um, raspberries? A couple months. So... Um, rhubarb? Wow! Rhubarb is in season right now. It's just coming oh. in. That's right. It's early spring. It's absolutely delicious and fantastic. And when I use fruit desserts, I just, I'm adamant about keeping things seasonal and of course as local as possible because that's the best way to do it. Hopefully you guys can go to your farmer's markets and you know make some uh, you know connections with farmers there and understand where the stuff comes from and also talk to them why it's important to buy seasonal local produce and vegetables and fruits ah, yeah, it's good just, tip. yeah it's really important there you go and it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg if you're savvy about it you know it's okay so for the it's manageable best, so for the best <clears throat> tasting stuff keep it seasonal yeah the best tasting stuff because you don't have to do much to it you know you can use uh -huh. it as like a fresh toss of lemon juice and a tiny bit of sugar or you can just eat it as is or you can put it in the oven and char strawberries you know oh they're fantastic yeah it's good Very just good. as a couple examples right awesome All right mm. nice now while our cheesecake is in the oven we are going to make our ginger rhubarb compote right compote <clears throat> so we're going to start i'm going to Cut down the ginger. 
a little bit. I'm gonna peel it. Okay. When you pick out ginger, make sure it's it's uh, firm and you have a shiny skin, right? Because that's fresher. It's a fresher thing. And of course, you don't want to get or use, you know, unripened or subpar products, right? You want the best things that you can get. Um, yeah. Ginger roots, easy to find. Asian markets, pretty common at, at uh, supermarkets and whatnot. So, yeah. I'm just going to take that off. Peel, peel, peel. I'm going to add my rhubarb towards the end of the compote process because it takes very little heat for it to cook. Um, I want it to maintain its shape. Uh, I don't want it to turn into a thready, mushy blob. Although that blob would taste very good, I want to see like chunks of rhubarb, right? Yeah, let's do it. Ah. We're gonna cut the ginger now, right? So we got it peeled. So we're just gonna cut it lengthwise, not across. We'll cut across later after it's been uh, cooked. Okay. So it's probably like a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, looks good. So I'm gonna get my water to boil, make my syrup, and I add my sugar as it starts to boil, right? And then we're gonna put in the ginger, ginger baby, ginger baby. I'm gonna drop in a couple drops of a neutral vinegar. Um, Cause I don't want anything to crystallize. About a teaspoon. Could be any vinegar. Um, stay white. Stay away from darker vinegars because um, it might it'll kind of give your compote a brown hue, um, which is not a bad thing. But in this case, it may not look as good since the cake, the exterior of the cheesecake, is brown, very brown. So all of our sugars in here. It's coming to a boil. Once it's clear, all the sugar's dissolved, I'm going to add the ginger. Hey, and then I'm going to turn the heat down. And then it's going to slowly candy, right? Right. And if you do this at a high heat or too high of a heat, too much water will evaporate out and you would have to add a little more water to keep it a two to one ratio, right? Remember, two parts sugar, one part water throughout the entire process. Now I'm going to add the ginger. Boiling. Okay. I'm going to turn that down to a simmer, simmer, simmer down, simmer down now. All right, so I'm just going to let that simmer, right? And through this process, which I'll, I'll keep you abreast, uh, the ginger is going to become translucent. So essentially when you're candying something, you're replacing the uh, water molecules with sugar molecules, right? So that's how it gets that chewy texture, a little bit translucent, you know, nice and candied, right? Yeah. Is that okay, Mr. Rhubarb? It's okay, Rhubarb baby. I rinsed off my uh, rhubarb. I'm sure by now you know that I like a little bit of theatrics, minus the drama. <laughs> so, since this compote is very straightforward and very simple, instead of cutting them little pieces crosswise, I'm putting them on a very, very uh, theatrical bias. How about that? Right? It's going to be very nice. Just let the very understated cheesecake I mean, that on the plate is going to look fantastic next to a big slice of caramelized cheesecake. Yum! In fact, I'm going to eat a piece. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Woo! Look at that. So see how it's puffed up around the edges? Still a little soft in the center, of course. I'm just going to rotate it just for some extra insurance. 
because there are always hot spots in ovens. And it seems like the back of this oven is hotter than the front. So yeah, I just rotated it back to front, back to front. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at that. Bonk. All right, guys. Here's the true test. It's a little smoky, very caramelized, and oh, look at that. It's like a big fat souffle, right? It's just fantastic. So now we're gonna let this sit and cool to room temperature, and it's gonna fall and, you know, because it's souffle, because there's so much uh, egg in that mix, right? Um, and then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator, and then we're gonna eat it. Well, howdy doody. Our ginger has been cooking and simmering for a little while. I am making an executive decision right now to go ahead and take them out. So I'm just gonna lay these out to drain a little bit, cool. I'm gonna set that aside. Now, <clears throat> I got my syrup here. All right? So I'm gonna add just a little bit of cinnamon. I don't want too much because I don't want it to power over the ginger. And I'm gonna add a tad bit of vanilla paste. Just like that. Mm hmm. Mm, sure smells delicious. So now I'm gonna add my rhubarb. Okay guys. So remember, it's not gonna take very much heat to, or much time or heat to cook this and I don't want it mushy. I actually want a little bit of crunch still on this rhubarb. So what I'm gonna do is bring this back to a boil and then turn it off and probably wait five to 10 minutes. Um, I'm gonna pull out a piece each time and uh, test its doneness. Cause I want it to be slightly cooked, but not completely cooked, right? Cause I want them to hold the shapes. Like I said, I want there to be a little bit of crunch cause then that tartness is really gonna come through, right? Yummy, yummy, yeah. Yeah, so I'm turning off the fire there. I'm just gonna let this sit just for a couple minutes. Yeah, so there's just a little tiny bit of resistance um, when I put the fork into the rhubarb. So I'm taking it out, I'm spreading these out. I don't want these to clump up or, you know, sit on top of each other when I transfer them to the bowl. I want them to cool because there is going to be a little carryover cooking. So you definitely want to consider that when you're testing for doneness. So what happens with uh, the simple syrup or this uh, syrup base, two to one, uh, ratio right two parts sugar one part water is the sugar density <clears throat> holds a lot more heat compared to it having uh, a higher water content right I also got a little bit of inspiration the poaching liquid I'm gonna reduce down to a caramel nice light caramel and I'm gonna uh, drizzle it over the cheesecake on the plate after we slice it and have some of the rhubarb next to it, right? I think it's great. Remember, uh, depth of flavor, layers of flavor, right? Yeah. I'm gonna throw in a, probably a couple tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter, to finish this off because it'll give it a nice sheen, a little richness, of a good finish right you don't want a really dark caramel for this because i don't want it to be a caramel per se i just want it to i still want to maintain that sort of warm buttery ginger root 
flavor. I want the cinnamon to still be there and the vanilla to still be there, right? So that's quite a, a, a very pale, uh, a very nice uh, color. I think it looks great. And we'll just use that basically at room temp or maybe even a little warm. But we'll have to see when we get to that point. Boing! All right, so now we're gonna cut up the ginger, right? It's a little sticky, that's fine. Let's cool down a little bit. So I wanna cut it in little strips. Just like that. I decided to actually put them into uh, larger chunks. It's probably quarter inch, right? I kind of want to be able to see. I don't want them to just necessarily disappear. But you guys can do whatever you want. If you want to cut small pieces, a little brunoise, that's fine. It just really is a matter of your preference and your taste, right? I'm going to put a little sugar, <coughs> granulated sugar, into the bowl. Then I'm going to take my little pieces of ginger that I've cut already. And I'm gonna toss them in that sugar. And break them up into little individual pieces, just like that. Look at that, oh my gosh. It's just amazing. Isn't it fantastic? Then I can set these on the side, let them dry out, and we can use them on the plate. Hey, so we're at the point of the video where we're actually going to um, cut a piece and put some rhubarb on mm -hmm. and a little bit of that uh, syrup and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Put it all and together. Don't forget the ginger. And the ginger. Candy ginger. Oh my gosh. So we want to remind you to uh, like and subscribe. That's right. Like and subscribe are the most important part. But it's also important that you tell your friends. Let's get to the eating. Woohoo! <gasps> Someone took a piece already. Oh my gosh. <gasps> oh my gosh. It wanted to get dressed up for the party. Hey. Uh, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> so here we have it, guys. Our Bosque cheesecake with poached rhubarb, candied ginger. Yum. -y. Looks fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video because I surely enjoyed showing you guys how to do this so yeah try it out let us know what you think and we'll see you next time adios